I'm Ellie Kohani. I'm so excited to be here tonight with the Beit HaTfut Sot of America, the Museum of the Jewish People's exhibit called Light and Shadows, the story of Iranian Jews, which I must say I'm a proud Iranian Jew and I'm so glad to be here tonight welcoming you to this exhibit and to meet all the wonderful people who are behind Beit HaTfut Sot and the great supporters of the museum. Good evening. I'm Jacob Weiss, director of Yeshiva University Museum, and I'm delighted to welcome you here this evening to the opening celebration of Light and Shadows, the story of Iranian Jews. This beautiful exhibition explores the art, culture, and traditions of one of the world's oldest Jewish communities. Jews have lived in Persia, now Iran, for nearly 3,000 years and have spent most of the last 1,400 years of that period under Muslim rule. Iran's Jews have faced times of marginalization, persecution, and forced conversion, and long periods of acceptance, integration, and richly productive coexistence. It is the remarkable character and continuity of Iranian Jewish culture in the face of repeated upheavals that is at the heart of this exhibition. At Yeshiva University Museum, we explore the essential characteristics and abiding values at the core of the Jewish experience. Through artistic, visual, and material culture, our exhibitions and programs bring to life the beauty, creativity, and dynamism of Jewish ideals and traditions across the generations. The story of Iranian Jews embodies this beauty and dynamism. It is a community that has steadfastly maintained rich customs across generations and centuries while adapting to dramatic upheaval, social, and of course, geographic changes. We are, we are especially grateful to Beit HaTfutzot, the Museum of the Jewish People in Tel Aviv, for having conceived and organized this exhibition. And I'd like in particular to acknowledge Shula Bahat, CEO of Beit HaTfutzot of America, and the curatorial team of Beit HaTfutzot, led by Orit Shaham Gover, who collaborated closely with our team at Yeshiva University Museum over a period of months to create this exhibition in New York and present it so beautifully here. It takes a village to put an exhibit together. And uh, I think it took a large village to put this exhibit together, which I really believe is of the highest uh, quality. In many ways, this exhibit to me uh, represents really what Betat Futsot, the new Betat Futsot, the renewed Betat Futsot is all about. It's about projecting the diversity of the Jewish people, but also what unites us. It is about appreciation of all of our different strands, all of our different traditions and culture, but in the end, to quote the, uh, one of the curators at uh, the British Museum, it is about the moral underpinning of the Jewish people. The story that is told here is a universal story. It's a story that has applications not only for the Iranian Jewish community, but all other Jewish communities. And in addition, it has a message to, I believe, to all diasporas that one can thrive and flourish, go through sometimes very difficult times, but at the same time, adhere to one's own principles and own traditions. And I think other diasporas not necessarily Jewish diasporas, can learn from this particular uh, exhibit. It is varied. It is not just, as I said, about the Iranian Jewish community. It's the Iranian Jewish community as a symbol and a, 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 of what Judaism is uh, all about, what the Jewish people are all about. The kind of Iran that we present to you here is not necessarily Iran of the news and the headlines. It's a different Iran. It's Iran that maybe those of us who are not of Iranian Jewish uh, origin actually don't know. I hope that you will spread the word about this exhibit and I hope to see thousands and thousands of people come to the Center of Jewish History and enjoy what you enjoyed uh, this evening and hopefully will continue to enjoy. Hi, I'm here with Shula Bahat, who is CEO of Beta Food Soda of America. Shula, what an amazing evening you have here with the Iran exhibit. Tell us a little bit about this exhibit. I, I, for me, it's like a dream come true. Uh, when I came to work for Beta Food Soda, this was my first project. 
and to see it coming to New York after three years in Israel and then in Los Angeles is really like a dream come true. And I'm really delighted with the turnout, I'm delighted with the excitement, with the enthusiasm around, and with the outcome. I think the exhibit is absolutely beautiful, and it belongs to all of us, not just to Iranian Jews. It belongs to all Jews, because the story of Iranian Jews is pretty much the story of all Jews who lived in diaspora. And beyond that, I think the fact that every diaspora, whether it's Jewish or not, can uh, survive and thrive is what this is the story of this particular exhibition. So Shula, you know, I'm a very proud Iranian Jew. I think you know that about me. Um, and this exhibit is just so moving and touching. And I really encourage everyone to come to the Yeshiva University Museum and take a look and to visit Beit HaTfutzot in Israel. But so tell me what this kind of exhibit tells us about Beit HaTfutzot and, and the museum's vision in future direction. Beit HaTfutzot, which used to be called, and is still called in, in Israel, the exact translation is uh, the Museum of the Diaspora, is really a no longer just a museum. It's also a hub, a center, a global center of Jewish peoplehood. And I think that's the, these are the two words that people should remember, Jewish peoplehood. Uh, it is, we were first people and then a religion. And the, I think there is no entity, there are no people like the Jewish people. We are a religion, we are a faith, we, are a, a, we have history, we, have, we are all over the world. We are connected to one particular land that is, whether we live, it or not, live there or not, is our spiritual homeland, that's Israel. There is no, no people like our people. And I think in many ways, this exhibit tells this story through the eyes and through the history uh, of the 3,000 year old diaspora, the first diaspora ever, the diaspora of Ju the Jews of Iran. Shula, um, I couldn't agree with you more. And again, I just really want to encourage everyone when you're in Israel, visit Beit Food So, Shula, is there anything that American Jews can do here in the U.S. in terms of learning more about Beit Food Well, first of all, when you go to Israel, visit it. But today you can visit Israel also, uh, Beit Food also online. One of the things that I would like people to know is that we are renewing Beit Food the exhibit is going to be totally different. It's going to encompass Jewish history from Abraham and Sarah and never end because the Jewish story is not ending. And it's not going to be just about one community, it's going to be about all communities. And I think that I would like to see, it's a museum of the Jewish people, and I would like to see the Jewish people support it, be part of it, come and visit it, whether it's online or in person, hopefully in, in person, and really be part of this celebration of Jewish life. Too much of our history, we focused on the tragedies rather than the victories. Now, we cannot eliminate the fact that there were tragedies in, the, in Jewish life, but I think we have to also connect our identity with the celebration of Jewish life. I mean, where do you, where do you see a people that has been around for, some people say, over 3,000 uh, years and still thriving, still adhere to the same moral code, since still do the same celebrations. I mean, if you go to Passover uh, in, in uh, the Iranian uh, Jewish community, yes, I know you, you use um, uh, scallions and we may use something else, but it's the same thing. I mean, we celebrate the same thing. We celebrate the same concepts, the same values. And that is the key, and that's what connects us. It is our honor and pleasure to be a, a partner in this exhibit. And for me, it's a little bit also a personal thing. I'm of Iranian origin. I left Iran 60 years ago, so I'm seeing things which uh, I haven't seen before. And also, I would like to thank uh, the Mashadi community, I'm part of that, who helped a lot in uh, organizing and finding and collecting uh, uh, historical stuff for this exhibit. It's amazing. The job that they did is unbelievable. It shows Iranian, the culture of Persian, to all the world. And now the people look at Iranian in a different way. 
they know who they are, what they did, and what they were doing in uh, Persia for 2,500 years. And I was in Israel when they had this exhibition over there, and I really enjoyed it. And I thought that this is very important and I should support it. And I hope the other people, especially other Iranian Jews, they support to continue to show this exhibition, which I call it the stationary exhibition, in other parts of the world, in Europe, all over. I think it's a duty of all the Jews to support this. Mark, I want to ask you a question. Yes. So I know that we have a heritage that goes back 2,500 years. Exactly. Can you tell us one thing about the Iranian Jewish community and our heritage that you're most proud of? That I am most uh, pr proud of. Iranian or Iranian Jews? I think uh, hospitality. They are very hospitable people by heart. Anybody who comes to Iranian house, he or she feels at home. It really it does. All right. <laughs> I agree. So um, on behalf of Maroc, I am extending an invitation <laughs> to the Etarian household, to all the viewers of Shalom TV. Is that okay? Yes. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're, you're welcome to join. And I have to tell you personally, I have tasted Maroc's food. It is from heaven. <laughs> so you'll come and have some Persian food with us, Shalom TV and Maroc Etarian. Thank She's you. kidding me. <laughs>
will open its gates in the first half of 2017. So yes, we're very excited. Um, that sounds really amazing. I have to tell you, the last time I was in Israel, I went to visit, and um, the potential there is clearly so huge. So can you tell us, for the American um, potential museum visitor who is here in the U.S., what will we be able to access in the near future? Well, we've got some very exciting temporary exhibitions lined up for 2014. Um, we have a, um, a Dreyfus exhibition opening in March, and then later on in the year, we have something to do with mysticism and art. Uh, and then an Amy Winehouse exhibition, a uh, great deceased Jewish artist. Beit HaTfutzot, or the Museum of the Jewish People, is the museum of the entire Jewish people. And what we try to do, especially in recent years, is to do more and more um, community exhibitions. Uh, the Iran exhibit is a great example of that. Um, after that, we did a Bukhara. Uh, exhibit which was uh, not as large but very successful and we're currently working on a, um, on an Iraq exhibition and we're in the very very preliminary research stages for a Morocco exhibition so it's definitely something that we're working on um, constantly we will always have a series of strong community exhibitions because this is what we're about we're about the different strands that together um, uh, make up the entire Jewish story. So Dan, I, I have to say I couldn't be sold more myself personally on the notion of having a museum and education center for the Jewish people. Um, but so tell us a little bit about you know the vision for the Jewish people. Do you see us as a diaspora going back to the home, or how 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 does that work, and how does Beit Hatfutzot see the Jewish people? Well, Beit Hatfutzot literally means the house of diaspora, but we don't call ourselves the museum of the diaspora anymore because that whole. Um, division of Israel and diaspora we feel is outdated. We're a united Jewish people. Some of us live in Israel, some of us live in uh, North America, some of us live in France or in the UK or in South Africa, but there's so much more that unites us than separates us. And we're about finding the common denominator, what unites every Jew throughout the world. Um, and so the, uh, the brand of Jewish identity that Beit HaTfutzot promotes is a pluralistic, inclusive brand of Jewish identity. Um, and it's not so much about drawing the line between Israel and other Jewish communities all over the world. Israel will always be the center of Jewish identity, just like the Hebrew language will always be the language of the, the, uh, the Jewish people. But we're much more now about finding the common ground, and there's so much common ground between us all. I mean, when we meet Jews from different places all over the world, there's, a, there's an instant, um, almost metaphysical bond that we feel between us. And we're about promoting that and promoting a sense of belonging through engagement in Jewish identity. I think, Dan, that, that is just so truly beautiful, united together under the um, banner of Beit HaTfutzot, which is the Museum of the Jewish People. Dan Tudmore, thank you so much for joining us on Shalom TV. Thank you very much. For me, this uh, event is, is uh, more than a little bit emotional. My, uh, for me, the Iranian community is very important. I don't know if all of you have uh, heard about it, but my father was born in Iran. He was born in uh, Hamedan. And he made Aliyah. <laughs> Who is from Hamedan here? Raise your hand. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and uh, he made Aliyah to Israel about 94 years ago. And I must tell you that my experience with the Iranian community actually was focusing most of my life only about the stories how they made Aliyah. This was a very unique kind of Zionism that the little community in Hamadan was so anxious, you know, to go and see the Holy Land. And they simply, you know, collected their, their their stuff, their, their packages, and they started, generally speaking, walking to Israel. They made a long way all the way from Iran via 
uh, Iraq. They spend like uh, about eight months in Iraq, and then down to Basra, and from Basra to Bombay, and from Bombay all the way around to Egypt, and from Egypt directly to Tel Aviv, to, to Jerusalem, where my father met my mother, and she came from Yugoslavia. So they met in a very romantic, small streets of uh, the whole city of Jerusalem. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, in those days, after the independence of Israel, we were all very busy in securing uh, in securing the, 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 uh, the state of Israel. And my dream was to be a pilot, so I was then very uh, much uh, busy in, uh, you know, serving in the Air Force, participating on all the uh, military events and all the wars, and that's this and that. And then one day, I joined Beit HaTfutzot. And when I joined Beit HaTfutzot, I realized that naturally, this institute was mainly, I would say, more Ashkenazi oriented. And for the first time, we have collected a group of people whom they are not necessarily from uh, Western Europe. They are from other places of the world. And from then on, the whole idea of Beit Futsot to bring together all Jews from all over the world came to reality. And this exhibition was one of the major events in Israel, one of the major events in Beit HaTfutzot. And I had the privilege and the honor to escort this uh, important project in uh, Beit HaTfutzot in Tel Aviv. It was so good, it was so emotional, it was so important, and it touched actually every single Iranian in Israel and, every, and many Iranians around the world. So we were able to raise some fund and to transfer the exhibition all the way to Los Angeles. And now it is here, and this is actually the third station where this exhibition is being displayed. And my dream is that it will also be displayed in Europe as well. Uh, I have to tell you one more thing. It's not only me that I was busy in other things rather than, you know, to hear more stories about the Iranian Jews, the history of the Iranian Jews, it was actually, I would say, uh, normal to the youngers in Israel who became, you know, sabre, who became, you know, more Israelis, and they were not so much aware about the history of their roots. What this exhibition has done in Israel, and other things which are related to Iran today, by the way, and by the way, I am speaking about Iran for the last four or five years, not about the history, not about the heritage, not about the Jews in Iran, but as you can imagine, about other things in Iran today. But I'm so happy to go back, to look at the history, to, to see for the first time what does it mean to be Jews a thousand years ago, 1,500 years ago, 500 years ago, 50 years ago. So in all, along all this long period of time, how Jews have suffered sometimes and had better times in other times, but generally they had a very rough life in, in Iran. For the first time, when the Falawi uh, dynasty took power in Iran back in the 19th century, it was for the first time relations not only between the Jews in Iran and the Jews in Israel, but also between the state of Israel and the state of Iran. And for me, this was my second experience about Iran because I also had the opportunity and the privilege to visit Tehran back in 1971 as a fighter pilot 
whom I was sent by the Air Force to uh, train one of the simulators. I don't know if you're familiar with simulators, but jet fighters have simulators. Israel w was not able to afford to buy such a thing, so the Iranians, they bought it from the Americans, so we were sent there, and for me to see Iran, this was the second time. And the third time, obviously, is in these days, where unfortunately we have this conflict, and I believe and I hope, and maybe in the last few months we are experience, experiencing a new trend, maybe a new direction. We, as a people who are responsible for the security of Israel, we cannot let ourselves be too much optimistic because we have to keep our responsibility in a high level. However, I must say, personally, knowing the Jews, knowing the Iranians a little bit, uh, uh, based on my experience with the Iranians' leadership, at least the Air Force, I can tell you one thing, that maybe, and we are all hoping, that maybe in these days, we are putting down the roots of a new trend, and maybe all of us will be able to visit again Iran as a friendly country between Israel and Iran, we will be able to bring back home to Israel or to America, but my dream is to Israel, the 30,000 Jews which are still left in Iran. I want to wish all of us and our future generation to keep this history and to keep this heritage and to be part of the story, as we say in uh, Beit HaTfutzot. We are all Jews around the world. We are all part of the story, and we are all equal in this story. The Europeans, the Iranians, the Iraqis, the, uh, the, the Far Easterns, the Indian, Indians, the South Americans, the North Americans, everywhere, we are all part of the story. Enjoy the exhibition and stay friendly and stay part of the story. Good evening. Light and Shadows, the story of Iranian Jews, on display now through April 27th at Yeshiva University Museum at the Center for Jewish History. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support Shalom TV with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double chai or more, to the nonprofit organization Jewish Education in Media. Simply visit the Shalom TV website homepage and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check made out to GEM to GEM, Post Office Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive on DVD with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.